It's just that a lot of people, yeah, they just work out and they eat healthy and they kind of ignore some of those components that are very, very important for keeping the body's battery charged. Through all your trials and tribulations of fitness and being a physical specimen, like what do you think the top five most important things are for folks listening? Oh. We're still maybe on that phase one of the journey. Yeah. We're still on the physical phase of the journey. Yeah. Well, I, I think really, like when you read, I don't know, Women's Health Magazine or Men's Health Magazine or a lot of popular fitness literature or media out there, it's really positioning the idea that to be healthy and to live a long time, you got to work out and follow the right diet. And that's like really, you know, one tenth of the equation. And you've got a whole bunch of people who are engaged in physical culture and fitness who are still walking around with brain fog and poor sleep and poor libido and, uh, uh, you know, poor recovery and sore joints and frequent injuries and out of control appetite because, frankly, the modern fitness media world doesn't know anything about or doesn't teach the stuff that truly optimizes the human body, namely the things that charge up the human battery and the mitochondria. And what I mean by that would be uh, light, magnetism, oxygen, um, uh, minerals, uh, water, heat, and cold. Like those would be a few biggies. So like I'll, I'll take somebody who's, who's exercising a lot and still having a lot of problems or can't lose weight or can't get the performance they want and who's also eating well. And I'll introduce things like, you know, red light therapy, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy and grounding and earthing, um, breath work usually in like a hot setting, like an infrared sauna, frequent cold soaks, uh, some element of meditation, and then like lots of minerals and good, clean, pure water and, uh, you know, a lot of earthing and grounding and all these aspects that basically cause the cell to maintain this necessary negative charge on the inside of the cell that cause the mitochondria to proliferate that allow for, for cellular autophagy to occur and proper cellular turnover to occur. And all of a sudden they start sleeping well and they start recovering and they get better benefits from shorter workouts and the, the diet's easier to follow. And so I think a big part of it is all these variables that almost in a way kind of mimic what our ancestors would have done, but you know, incorporating even things like biohacking technologies to accelerate that process. Like, I think that's where a lot of the magic lies. So, you know, so to, to more precisely answer your question, it'd be um, frequent use of red light therapy and sunlight therapy. It would be frequent use of heat therapy, preferably like infrared or dry sauna, uh, frequent use of cold soaks, cold showers, and cold thermogenesis in general, um, use of post electromagnetic field mats or grounding and earthing technologies, and then like water that's hydrogen enriched, uh, mineral enriched, deuterium depleted, structured, and frequent use of minerals. And you throw a lot of that stuff in and all of a sudden the body's battery gets charged and you feel really good. It's just that a lot of people, um, yeah, they just work out and they eat healthy and they kind of ignore some of those components that are very, very important for keeping the body's battery charged. Interesting. Hey, have you ever heard of spring aqua? What filter are you using? Where's where's this good water coming from? Because I just put in like a hydrogen. It's just under my sink. Yeah. It's like it's structured. It's hydrogen. It's not reverse osmosis. Okay. But I'm curious. Yeah. Have you heard of the spring aqua? Which one are you using? No, I haven't heard of spring aqua. So the main things you want to pay attention to are testing of the water, first of all. A lot of people just assume the same filter is going to apply to all water. But whether you're on well water or municipal water, or some other form of water, testing the water is really important. And there, you know, you could just Google the name of your city water testing and get a water test. And then from there, uh, typically you'll want filtration that's either reverse osmosis or double carbon block to, and either of those will get rid of most impurities, but then you still got like dead, dead water after that process. So ideally you're structuring the water either through a central home structuring uh, unit or like pour through filtration, or they even sell like sticks. Like there's one company called Analana that will sell like a stick that will help to structure the water. And then you want to remineralize the water. And 
uh, that would be like the addition of really, really good clean minerals like Protect or Element, or even though it's more expensive, I think top of the totem pole would be something like Quinton, which is like a, a mineral derived from, from ocean plasma um, or ocean uh, phytoplankton. And then the, the, the final component that you want to think about is deuterium, just because uh, these heavy isotopes of deuterium are pretty common in water these days and plants due to herbicide and pesticide exposure, and it kind of gums up some of the mitochondrial machinery. And so you can actually add deuterium depleted water to your already filtered water. And for, for that, I recommend people actually get a deuterium test. If your deuterium levels are high, go through a few months of consuming deuterium depleted water. And then if you're doing a good job restricting exposure to heavy amounts of glyphosate, herbicides, pesticides, starches, and sugars, then your body will naturally become deuterium depleted over time. But in a nutshell, you want hydrogen enriched, mineral enriched, well filtered, preferably deuterium depleted water that's been structured. And that's as close as you can get to good natural spring water as possible. Now I'm spoiled because my dad's been in the water filtration industry for like a decade. He started off as like a gourmet coffee roaster and espresso machine repair man who realized that the flavor of the coffee besides the quality of the bean was dictated by the quality of the water. And so he actually got out of the coffee business and now all he does is import materials from all over the world, you know, like uh, Israel is one of the top places because Tel Aviv and Israel, because of their, their water conservation technologies, have access to some of the best filtration methods in the world. And so my dad has a whole warehouse where he just like imports water filters, uh, outfits them with like structured water capabilities, reverse osmosis. Um, and, and so I get, I get his stuff. Uh, that's what most of my clients use too. It's just called greenfield water. And so I realized that, that I'm probably biased, but that's, I use my dad's filter systems cause I just think they're, they're like the best.